Hi guys, it's Paul from eModels.co.uk. Uh, welcome back to part two of the Tamiya 1.6 scale YZ250 motocrosser build. Um, it's as we stand now, exactly like we were in the part one. Uh, frames all built and sprayed in gloss black. Uh, we used Arclad black base primer for us. That's all done. So today um, we're going to concentrate on the engine. Um, hopefully get installed in the frame. Uh, ready for the next step after that. So we'll crack on with the build. Um, let's get started. Okay, so it's step two in the instructions, which is the uh, construction of the engine block. Um, it looked a little bit vague on the instructions, which way um, these coolant fins were orientated. So I've actually assembled half of it off camera um, just to make it a bit easier. Uh, we're filming Rob and you sitting there watching me stare at the model blankly for 10 15 minutes. So, as you can see, the hole from your right hand side is all um, glued and in position now. So, I'll quickly go through the other side. Uh, hopefully, it'll all go in flawlessly. Um, as I say, the instructions, although they are quite clear, it's quite vague where the actual positions are. So, it does pay attention just to get all the parts necessary and just dry fit them. Make sure they fit what they should do and what have you. So the way I started, I started from the outer edge. Um, so a little bit of time you're extra thin. If I can try and keep this in shot for you quite hard because it's such a fiddly little stage. So just a quick once over there. Make sure you got oriented the right way as normal. It's on. So get the rough position you want. Then I grab some precision tweezers and give it a move it round a little bit just to to get it where we wanted it. So that's the outer edge done. Once you get this part in because it's got, if I get on the white part, two little lugs that stick out the top, it makes it a lot easier and everything seems to fit in and it was just a bit confusing where that outer one goes because um, looking at it I couldn't see it was orientated to the right of this little, there's like a little, um, what would you call it, lip just there, you can't really see it. Uh, I couldn't figure out from instructions whether it sat one way or the other so it was a little bit of trial and error dry fit and get in. So once you get that part in, everything else seems to slot in quite well. So it's just a case then of get them where you roughly want them. A little bit of glue. Again be careful, fingerprints and what have you. Um that we're not getting any glue where we don't want it. And then just orientate the part as per the instructions. Which, like I say, once you've got that outer one done, because this part physically sits on that one, it makes it a lot easier to see where it's actually going. So, another quick lick of glue just on that seam. Then the third one, it's got a little cut out just for the little point inside there, so quite self explanatory where that one goes. So pop that in. As you can see, that's literally just slotted in now. If I zoom in a little bit, get the camera to focus. That part, which is this one, third one in, is literally sitting where we want it now. So again, just quick dab of glue inside. Certainly not the most complicated build, just those instructions are a little bit vague. If you've built the kit, or you come to build the kit, you'll see exactly what I mean. Although they are nice and clear, it doesn't really point out where the part should be. So all that's left now is a couple of... The last two cooling fin, uh, they're an actual part, so separate to go over there. The actual um, components, 
So again, make sure you're on the right way. And again, these will just drop in because the last ones just did. So there you go, push it in. You can see it just there. Sits in lovely. So once, you, once I got over that initial confusion, nice and simple. No problem at all. So there's that one. And then the front one. Again, to come along. Pop it in and it sits in there. Of its own free will. To be honest, I don't think it needs glue in tin. Nice and tight, but we'll give it a bit as we drop it. So there we go. So there's that stage complete now. Um, so we'll put that to one side, let that dry. And then we'll get it primed up, ready to paint it matte black. So what we'll do now is we'll move on to what looks like it's a crankcase it is. So we see 14, 21, 22. So there's 21, 22. Nice big part, so nothing too fiddly. So just those three parts. Give them a quick clean up before gluing it all together. Like I say, these were the nice detail parts. You can see Yamaha, uh, magnesium, oil, Kickstarter. So nice detail parts. As you can see, compared to now, they are quite big. So not fiddly in the slightest. No flash on this part, which is nice. There is the odd little bit of flash on the kit. Nothing too dramatic or difficult to remove, which is good. Um, so just go around, give it all a little tidy up as we cut off the sprue. That one's done. Okay, so there's all the parts cleaned up, fit them together, make sure they all fit, a little bit of glue, just go around the whole seam, glue it all together. Colour colour for this part, uh, matte black, unsure what black to use yet, um, whether to use Tamiya or Mr Hobby, um, a few of you will know, um, I was that impressed by the Mr Hobby paints, I've gone out and bought the entire range of the aqueous colour, so I'll have a look through the colours in a bit, I know there's a flat black but I think I might be a little bit too, too flat as opposed to matte. I'll have a look and see. If not we'll use Tamiya um, XF1. Because it's not as flat a black as the Mr Hobby. Um, so there's that done and it's actual crankcase cover now. So again the parts are all been cleaned up. Using sanding sticks, um, polishing sponges, what have you. So once the glue dries, I'll go around, tidy that up as well before priming. Uh, we'll prime this in Vallejo Grey Primer, I think, and see how we get on as well with that. A few may notice as well um, with the boxes here. Um, it's a little bit different that side now, you might have seen it on the opening credit bit. Um, my spray boost actually at that side now and it used to be over here. Um, so I hope I can get a decent camera angle when I'm over there because I haven't actually tried it yet. 
in the spray booth, but we'll see in a minute. Because as soon as this dries, I'll be heading over there to prime them. Makes my modelling room a bit more functional for me, a lot more room. Makes things a lot easier. So there we go, that's all glued. So there we go, there's that part ready to go. And the last two parts this time are just these two. So we'll quickly cut those off. I'll glue them together. And we'll get all these parts primed up together. Do like a small batch together rather than one. One at a time, makes more sense. Better use of your uh, spraying time. So literally, there you go. They very, very nearly hold together on their own. Just come apart at the very last bit. So good fit again. Typical time of your kit. So we'll glue this quickly together. And then we'll go over to the spray booth. And give them a coat of primer. Right, okay, we're over in the spray booth now. Uh, a slightly different angle uh, than we normally have because as I say I've moved a few things around the workshop so you've got a slightly different camera view there uh, I'll have to get used to it as well. Uh, all those energy components we were building before uh, they've all now dried. Uh, I've put them all together um, building the actual main engine assembly so as you can see there that is. So the old trust, trusty um, clamp tweezers pop it in, we'll do it that way actually there we go, just to hold it for me, so no need to grab it with the fingers then. Uh, as I said, we're going to use Vallejo Surface Primer, polyurethane, great stuff, um, really can't recommend it enough once you get used to spraying it, it's awesome stuff, absolutely brilliant. Um, sprays very neat, very smooth, um, very simple as well to use, right, get the spray booth on. Get rid of all the clean out of the airbrush. A piece of square to that. Corner. So the same as always, don't try and cover it in one go. I like dust. All over. Then you can come back. Stop on a little bit thicker. Worst thing you can do with this stuff is get on too thick, it just pulls and runs everywhere. So take your time. I'm running it about 25 psi. And as always, using my harvesting, one of my harvesting back evolutions, 4.2 needle in it. Awesome airbrush, the tip finger needed to. From prime a big model like this to very fine, intricate lines, and what have you, superb. So once you've got your main coverage like that has been done, uh, start looking for all the angles you've yet to get in, especially on this with all these cooling fins, there's going to be a lot of places that we haven't got without realising. So, just turn all different angles, get the airbrush right in there. Very fine spray. So you happy at all. So as we can see, all nicely primed. Still a bit wet. Some of the areas where it's 
strong all that's thicker so we'll put that to one side, let it dry and then we'll come back and put the matte black down on it. <clears throat> right okay, the primer's had a good hour to dry, um, it's looking well, self leveling as it always does, so nice and smooth finish, really really nice base layer. So we're going to use Mr Hobby uh, H12 flat black. Um, Use this on the what did I use on the ME109 uh, propeller thing used it on, and it worked very very well, very nice. So we'll give it a whirl on this bit of a larger area this time. Um, so I've loaded up the heart of the steam back, um, so we get the spray booth on, and we're going to uh, cover it on. So a few mil on the colour cuff, um, thinned just like I did in the review. So, like I said, a little bit thinner than you would. Tammy is. Uh, seems to spray out a lot better. With a slightly thinner ratio. I'm just going to lightly dust all the model. And then we'll come back. And fill it all in. Again, as every time I've used this paint, very easy to apply. It goes on super, super smooth. I'm just using um, just a hobby, just just a colour thin. I'm not a leveling one for this because I believe that makes it take absolutely ages to dry. One keeps telling me. So, oh, good. Drop it. Luckily we haven't got any thick paint on. A little bit of catastrophe. As I was about to say, once you've got a light dusting on, start coming back. Slightly thicker coats. Really start to build the colour up. Obviously as always, paying attention to all the different angles, different recesses, etc. Show me all get equal coverage. There we go. Just one colour for empty. Once you get used to the spray and uh, characteristics of this, it's, you, you will absolutely love it. How they get knocked spots off time yeah. uh, And it comes in a really good range of colours, uh, a lot different than some of the Tamiya ones, some really uh, imaginative, imaginative colours as well. Uh, your standard red, black, white, etc. with some really nice colours in between. So. Definitely my favourite paint at the minute. I'm trying to use as much as I can at the minute on anything and everything. Empty. And there we are. 
what's covered to me. Nice flat lack. Nice smooth finish with the primer as well. That's laid down. It was a very nice base coat. So I'll let this dry. Have a look at it once it's dry, make sure it is fully covered. Um, and we'll move on to the next step. Okay guys, so we're back from the spray booth. Uh, the engine's dried overnight. Um, the matte blacks turned out very well, just as I thought it would. Nice, really, really matte finish. Um, once it had dried from what you saw in the spray booth, I just had to give a quick, very quick going over shortly afterwards. Just a few little bits of mist, um, recesses and what have you, but there we go. So, really, really nice matte paintwork as you can see uh, I've added uh, Shinota clutch uh, control underneath uh, spar plugs in painted up glued in position uh, as to or two of the uh, frame bolts there two more to put in once it's in the frame actually hold it in position um, and off camera I've been working on various uh, ancillary components for the engine so we can start actually putting some of them on now um, so we've got the intake, uh, well I'm going to call it manifold, so I'm literally for now going to friction fit it if it's going to stay in, which it's not, so we will glue it. So super glue, obviously because the parts are painted, our normal plastic glue won't work, so we literally, let's use this. Mr. Hobby's um, super glue and putty applicator. I bought this the other day, first time using it properly. So, a little bit of super glue in the pot, very fine precision applicator. Pick it up and place it just where you want it. This is where I normally use cocktail sticks for. Um, I've wanted this for a while, so I finally bought it. It's about between £9 and £11, depending on where you get it from. And obviously, e models themselves sell it, and that's where I got mine from. So, that's that one in there. It sits on an angle as per the instructions show. So pop it in, just hold in position for a second or two. Not the greatest of purchase there, might be need a little bit more glue, but we'll leave it and see what it's set like. So that's that part on. So like I said off camera, um, I put a few parts together, put the um, CDR unit in all together again with the chrome parts um, not wanting to strip and paint them I've left them as they are uh, anything that's been cut off and then touched up with Vallejo model colour silver um, I use that silver because it's quite a matte silver not too shiny so I don't know if you can actually see the point underneath where I painted um, so we'll see what that goes like and what it looks like once it's together. So that's that one all together. And the, um, the ignition coil and lead um, all together. Again, the same uh, chrome plastic that comes with a kit. And the spark plug plug um, has been painted in Vallejo model colour, gloss brown. Um, I say gloss brown, it's actually the chocolate brown. It's a little bit of gloss varnish to give it that gloss effect so they're ready to go in once the um, instructions call for it so that's that stage done we've also fitted the oil filler um, to the crankcase so that's all on as well um, and that's about it so that stage is three and four done so flip the instructions over and we're on to stage five so the frame we did in part one we then got the engine which, as I said, I've just literally fitted. I'll zoom in a little bit. Those two frame bolts there and there. 
and they literally sit in there and then slough forward and the other two lugs go into that bit so we'll pop that in now get the actual engine into the frame which is the first major step of the build done so they literally sit at the back there like so uh, then it's a case of just opening that bottom part of the frame up a little bit to get it in he says so it may actually be easier to put the front in first so we'll just take that out a little bit fiddly It's strange, doesn't actually want to play ball. Get the back one in first, it helps, there we go. So, what I didn't actually notice was there was two little parts there, they've got fake bolts on and nuts, so it looks as though it's held in by those as well, but it's not. So that's that lined up lined up at the front as you can see on the intake there's a little spring ready attached so that connects to the actual intake to the manifold so that's those two in so now we've got two bolts to actually hold the front of the engine in so it's a case of lining it up popping that in like so so they fit in lovely so what I'll do, I'll just dry fit them, make sure they fit. Then we'll pop them out, a little bit of super glue on the end. I can't see if I ever want to take the engine out again. I see what kind of fit we've got, it's quite a tight fit. Which sadly that one's not. So what I might actually do, is rather than super gluing it in permanently, we'll use a little bit of a PVA type adhesive so we use a bit of micro scale crystal clear because that way should I ever want to um, remove the engine I can so again I'm going to use the Mr. Hobby tool I'm just going to put a little a little dab here and there And then we'll pop it in, like so, there we go, that's got that one. Take the tool back out of my mouth, terrible habits I've got. A little bit more glue. Because obviously, because this is PVA based, it'll give a good hold, but it's not permanent. So should at a later date we need to remove it, we can. rather than committing to having it installed permanently with super glue so there we go so that is literally crystal clear what you use on canopies and whatnot dries as the name says crystal clear so we've got a little bit of excess glue just there you can see just there so one of Tamiya's pointed cotton buds these are absolutely fantastic don't use them all the time because they're not cheap but they're pointed and they can get right in there whereas the bigger cotton buds can't obviously because this stuff says it dries crystal clear don't be relying on that so it's still remove any that you can So wet the cotton bud, right around the edge to you're happy, you got as much off as possible. Spin it around, same on the other one. There we go, 
job done. So there's the engine actually in the frame. Still got the other cover this side to go on, that's actually painted in gloss black. So, next step, we will pop on, we'll do the ignition lead, what it calls the coil lead, um, which actually sits, ooh, let's have a look which way we've got this, sits up the top there, just underneath, now luckily I didn't glue this, it held together with friction and it was lucky because I put it together the wrong way so it needs orientating 28 degrees because these are the vinyl softer plastic type they literally almost clip together he says is that one won't go on So again, it helps if it's the right way. There we go. So there we go, that's now the correct way. Because there's a little recess at the top that sits on that little part of the frame there. So again, we've got the, the glue applicator. As you can see, it's got a very, very, very fine tip. Um, comes in a set of three. The other two really are putty spreaders. So you can see them there in the protective sheets and also the little tray, super glue tray which is very very handy because the way I used to do it was either out the bottle, touch the tip of the nib um, or pop it on a bit of masking tape on the desk. So what we can do now is grab our part, super glue is just the thick type I pick her up from local DIY places like Tool Station, Screw Fix, etc. It's pound a bottle, cheapest chips. And then pop this in. I'm not 100% sure which way through the frame it goes. I'm assuming it goes actually through the frame. So what we'll do is we'll pop it in. We'll zoom out a bit. Pop it in, grab it with the tweezers. And then get it in position like so. Quite fiddly. Very fiddly in fact. So let's get in there. There we go, that's better. Go. It's glued in position. Probably gonna fall off again. What we'll do? A little bit of super glue activator, which basically instantly dries the glue. I'm just gonna skip ahead. No need. There's actually a progress diagram there, which is quite handy, just to make sure I got it in the right position. Quick spray of this. Lethal stuff. So don't breathe it in. Get rid of the excess. Give it a blow. Once it evaporates, it takes all the super glue with it, so not a problem at all. So there we go. That's in position. So the plug can be now put on the lead. It's very nearly dry, so I'll leave it a little bit longer rather than put the fingerprint in it. And then we're on to the actual CDI unit, which attaches two locations on the frame which is there and there so because these have got holes in I shall put it in and then we'll put some glue through the back to it rather than mucking about at the front we'll dry fit it first which is preferable a lot of the time so there we go attack position and to be honest it doesn't even need gluing so again, we'll leave on the outside of the frame for now, just till we're 
completely sure where it's actually going to sit, then we'll sort that out at a later date. So we're getting there a bit more progress done now. And there we go, there's the coil lead, HT lead, on the spark plug as well. So, certainly getting there now. So, what we'll do, that's us for today. Um, next time we'll progress on to getting the carburetor on, uh, the mufflers, uh, etc. A few more of the other. Uh, actual engine parts which require spreading gloss black so I won't use what I used on the frame I will use an actual gloss black and again it probably missed the hobby as well so we get that nice real glossy effect um, on it um, we'll see how far we get next time because then we start moving on to the actual rear suspension the rear forks and what have you um, it's one of those kits where loads of fiddly little stages then all together all of a sudden it'll come together as the build here before you know it you've, you've built it so uh, it's quite difficult for me to gauge uh, what what steps to do it in so I'm just picking them one at a time seeing how far we get um, so like I say next time we'll get the carburetor done the mufflers done and on there's a few more bits and bobs to spray and maybe we'll make a start on the rear suspension but that's us for today anyway so hope you on uk. Check out E-Model's website, all your modelling needs can be found on there. Have a look at um, E-Model's YouTube channel. Uh, all my previous videos are on there as well as some of E-Model's short inbox reviews. Uh, check out the Facebook page, like us on there, uh, comment on anything you want to see and obviously send your pictures into them as well if you're models. Uh, and I'll see you next time for part three. So thanks for watching, take care.